Hi, this is Ed. I uh, just wanted to do a couple of quick updates and let you guys know I'll be posting a bit more here on Esoteric Detective as well as my other two channels, which are called the Outer Light and the Outer Dark channel. Uh, here, of course, is my other channel, which is called the Outer Light channel uh, here, so you guys can check that out if you want. Uh, of course, I've done a large volume of videos. I basically cover what's happening in the news, uh, the Illuminati, the New World Order, things of that nature. So that is just called The Outer Light. If you type that into YouTube, you should get that. And here, of course, is my other channel, The Outer Dark. So I've got 40, about 43,000 subscribers on that, similar to Esoteric Detective, except no computer voice. I cover all types of things, government conspiracies, the Illuminati, uh, the Reptilian in the Vatican, for example, 9-11, you know, uh, it goes on and on, really. Of course, I've covered a lot of videos also on the outer uh, Esoteric Detective, which you guys are aware of. But I'm going to post more on Esoteric Detective as well. I'm going to post on Outer Light and, of course, do videos on the Outer Dark channel. I just want to point out one more thing, though, and that's that I was a guest on Shed Show Talks. <clears throat> Before I uh, go on, though... <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to say that really happy to be a guest on this talk show. We discussed uh, consciousness, aliens, um, and we've got more interviews to come, so keep an eye on that. And if you're interested in those topics, make sure to subscribe to uh, Shed Show Talks there. Uh, basically, we went on about all kinds of interesting stuff. These people really know their stuff. So if you're interested into those kinds of things and get going a bit more deeper down the rabbit hole, uh, then make sure you check out Shed Show Talks channel. But for this video, I really wanted to go on to something else, and that's what I want to play here, which is going to be an interview with a professor regarding the magnetic field. Now, this professor is actually a world-class professor and an expert in this field. They will go on to state the problems that are happening right now with the magnetic field and this is on Radio New Zealand. This is the national radio show of New Zealand. This is equivalent to, you know, uh, the largest, you know, this is equivalent to NPR in the United States, literally the equivalent of that. So here we have what is regarded as in New Zealand, you have a lot of the top geophysicists in the world, of course, uh, scientists in New Zealand, because uh, New Zealand's considered uh, a country which is uh, very uh, earthquake prone. It's called the, um, well, it's known as being earthquake related. You get a lot of earthquakes here and a lot of geophysical uh, research that goes into that geophysics research. So one of those is, of course, the Earth's magnetic field. So what they've found is that now there's a very strange escalation in the magnetic field. I'll play this radio interview after this. I just wanted to give it a precursor and to show you that, you know, mainstream science used to call us tinfoil wet, uh, wearing hat conspiracy theorists. They always have. Uh, of course, we, they used to say that about mass spine, turned out to be real. They said that about the 30 meter wave or freak waves, turned out to be real. They said that about all kinds of things. 9 11 turned out that that was totally a false flag, at least in my opinion. So um, here you have it. Great interview, and I just wanted to make sure to repost this on this channel so you guys could take a look at it. This is the South Atlantic Anomaly, and that's exactly what's happening now. So I uh, hope you enjoy the channel, and if you do like my content, make sure to subscribe to my other channels, The Outer Light and The Outer Dark, uh, especially The Outer Light, since I do um, cover topics. I do about three videos there every day. Outer Dark, I do maybe one every next day, basically. But in the meantime, this is Ed from the Outer Light, Outer Dark, and um, of course, Esoteric Detective. And, you know, have a listen to the interview, and of course, decide for yourselves. Go and do your own research, and of course, come to your own conclusions. In the meantime, I'll talk to you later, because I'm going to be posting a bit more on this channel as well. So there, I hope you enjoy the interview. <laughs> Finding your way in life can be a challenge, and we can all use a bit more direction in our lives. To get a bearing on where you're at, it helps to have a compass as a way of measuring the Earth's magnetic field. But this magnetic field does more than just help us get from A to B. It also protects us from the sun's harmful radiation. 
you don't normally think about magnetic fields unless you're in my business or you're trying to use a compass. But the magnetic field is, is really important, particularly in this uh, magnetic shielding capacity. And when we think about long-term processes, not having the magnetic field, many people even believe that that's a key question and a key variable for the habitability of a planet like Earth. And this is why geophysicist John Tarduno is intrigued about reports coming through that patches of this magnetic field, the Earth's magnetic field, deep under the Earth's crust, are changing. I think the best way to think about a magnetic field is very similar to a bar magnet. If you think about uh, how a bar magnet works, uh, you have magnetic poles. And there's, a, in, in a sense, a giant magnetic magnet in the Earth, but it's not like a permanent magnet. It's actually a magnetic field that's generated by churning liquid iron in the outer core of the Earth. So this process, kind of moving iron in, in deep within the core, actually generates a magnetic field that we see on the surface. And that's the same magnetic field that you use when you use a compass. If you're out trying to find directions, uh, that's what's actually providing uh, the tilt to the compass needle that gives you directions. So it's that churning, it's that movement, if you like, almost, I'm thinking here, a bit like a dynamo that's creating this magnetic field. In terms of kind of getting a visual picture of it, it's actually convection. So if you just think about uh, water boiling on, a, on the stove, if that were actually iron, that would be kind of a good picture of what it might look like deep within the core, but just that the length scales are very different. We have this kind of motion of material over very, very long scales within the core of the Earth over large, large distances, and that's what actually gives rise to the, the very persistent magnetic field we see on the surface. And we need this magnetic field, don't we, as organisms living on this hunk of, of molten lava of, or, or molten iron? Yeah, the magnetic field is really important because it, it actually shields us from a harmful radiation, particularly radiation that comes from the sun. Uh, the sun is constantly streaming out uh, particles. These are mainly protons. And over time, if we didn't have a magnetic field, these could actually start to strip away the atmosphere. For example, that's one of the leading contenders for the reason that Mars doesn't have an atmosphere anymore, that uh, it once had a magnetic field, but that magnetic field collapsed uh, very early in its history and may have stripped away its atmosphere and uh, water on the planet. Now, geophysicists are intrigued because it appears that the Earth's magnetic field has been decreasing. And I need you to explain what that means and the implications of that. Sure. When we look at magnetic observatory data, so that's our, our best record of the Earth's magnetic field are from magnetic observatories. And if we look over the last 160 years, there's something a little bit alarming. That is the main component of the magnetic field, something we call a dipole field, has been decreasing rapidly over the last 160 years. Now, we might not think too much about this because 160 years is a relatively short time frame. It's just that the rate of decrease has been really rapid, as well as the pattern of decrease. In fact, it's not as if this decrease is occurring constantly over the entire planet. It seems to be concentrated mainly in one area, something we call the South Atlantic anomaly, this uh, kind of large area spanning the tip of South Africa to South America where the field seems to be decreasing at a very high rate. Do we know why there's a decrease in the magnetic field? So that's a very good question, and, and there are different ideas about this. One of the fascinating things about it, however, is if we kind of look at the surface magnetic field, we just see that the field is, is very, very weak on the surface in this area that we call the South Atlantic Anomaly. Now, if we were able to travel down to the very top of the core, something we call the core mantle boundary, we actually find that there are patches. Now, these come from ma mathematical models of the field, but many of these are accepted uh, in the community, that there are actually patches right at the core mantle boundary that are actually the wrong polarity for that hemisphere. So the field is actually reversed in little patches underneath this South Atlantic anomaly. So that's really very, very interesting for geophysicists because it suggests something uh, very active is, is going on that to kind of destroy the magnetic field in this region. 
Hold on, I just want to put that into context then. If I was able to get down to that layer in the mantle, which is how deep, for example, give me an idea of how far I'd have to tunnel down. 2,900 kilometres. Okay, right. So that's deeper than anyone's ever been before. But if I did get down there and I had my compass in my hand and I was able to uh, stand, because I'm assuming it's pretty hot down there, what would be north here in Wellington would actually potentially be south down there. You're saying the compass, that those the polarity there has completely reversed there are these patches where the, the, the polarity of the field is completely reversed right now. And so what does that suggest? It's similar to what we see on, in sunspots. There are kind of a abnormalities of the magnetic field where it appears that the field is changing on very kind of small scale. So we have this unusual patch of the magnetic field. Now, perhaps that kind of patch will just go away with time. That's certainly a possibility. But one of the things that has gotten geophysicists really interested is that in numerical models of reversals of the magnetic field, and we know that, for example, in the last 100 million years, the field has reversed many, many times, this is what we see before a magnetic reversal. We see patches of reverse polarity in the wrong hemisphere, if you will, and before a reversal, these tend to grow and eventually they coalesce, and then very rapidly there's a magnetic reversal. So this is kind of one of the intriguing things about the field and one of the topics of debate. Are these patches that we see or can refer today, are they going to just go away or are they going to get bigger and are we going to head toward a magnetic reversal? These magnetic reversals, do we? how do you have evidence that they have actually occurred? Where do you look to sort of create a, a timeline of when they've occurred and how frequently? This was actually some of the, the really fundamental databases that were important in the actual building up of plate tectonics, so understanding plate tectonics, for example. So in the 1960s, there were a series of researchers who went around the globe and were collecting rocks, and they noticed that in some of the rocks were reverse polarity and some were normal polarity. And it was really not until the advent of very accurate radiometric age dating that it was actually determined that the rocks that were reverse polarity were all of the same age and all of normal polarity all of the same age. That is, um, these reversals were global phenomena. And since that time, there has been an entire time scale built up of these magnetic reversals. It's something called the geomagnetic reversal time scale that enables us to actually use this to tell time. So we find magnetic reversals in lava flows that have, have cooled to form a basaltic rock. We also find them deposited in sediments. As sediments are deposited, they lock in a record of the Earth's magnetic field. If the reverse magnetic field reverses, we get that kind of reversal preserved in sedimentary records. Wow. And so is there evidence in, I'm thinking here, clay, you know, the fact that we have used clay as humans, as uh, vessels and receptacles for various things, uh, would it affect clay? Uh, could you go back and actually interrogate sort of archaeological stuff that's been found? So that's been some of our work in South Africa. It turns out that when clay is either used in a in making a pot or, let's say, in making a hut or a, um, a grain bin, if that becomes fired, either by firing a pot to make a pottery or if a hut or a grain bin, for example, is burnt down later on, as soon as that is heated to very high temperature, and then during the cooling, the magnetic minerals that are in that clay will actually lock in a record of the Earth's magnetic field. So this is actually the field of archaeomagnetism, where we look at archaeological objects, and they can also tell us something about the ancient magnetic field. So are you suggesting, I just want to get this clear, that here today I have my compass and when I'm trying to navigate I find magnetic north but then I have something called declination which is an adjustment, it's about 7.5 degrees I think here in New Zealand at the moment um, from memory although I haven't used a compass because of smartphones and GPS systems <laughs> for so long I forget but are you suggesting that that declination, that might continue and spin all the way around 180 degrees, so my north may become my south. If we were to just take the record from the last 160 years and extrapolate that into the future, now that's an incredible extrapolation. That's not something that a scientist would normally do. But let's just do it anyhow. 
then the, the magnetic field, by definition, would change its polarity in about 2,000 years. Okay, that's a very long time from now. So it may not happen. Uh, it may be that the field continues to decrease and then it starts to increase again. We, we can't tell yet. All we can say is that the rate of decrease right now is unusual. It's, it's very, very fast, and it is typical of what happens as we head into reversals. But there's also a possibility that the field will continue to weaken, but then eventually it will start to uh, increase before uh, we go to a full reversal. Is this something that I should lay awake at night worrying about, John, or just get on with my life? There are a couple of, of societally uh, relevant issues associated with this. Now, as I said, a reversal, if it were to happen, it's going to be thousands of years in the future. That's not something to worry about. But if the field continues to decrease, let's say for you know many decades, then that's something that we should perhaps start to worry about. And the reason that we should worry about it is because it goes back to this magnetic shielding issue. If the magnetic shielding becomes less efficient, then it can start to have some impacts. Uh, for example, uh, we could start seeing more damage to satellites. There could be more damage to infrastructure when there's a large magnetic storm. And then maybe centuries into the future, there's another potential impact. If the magnetic field were starting to get particularly weak, we could actually start to see increased solar particles breaking down ozone. Now, this again is not a disaster scenario. Even uh, during reversal, the effect would be similar to creating an ozone hole similar to that, that that man created over Antarctica. So you could have increases in skin cancer rates, but that would only be during reversal. So that's something that is actually possible but it's not really a disaster scenario. It's just something that uh, is um, interesting and, and something that could eventually have some societal relevance. Is there anything that we're able to observe in the South Atlantic anomaly? This is this very large area of decreased magnetic field. Is there anything in that area that you're able to observe either at Earth level or above the Earth to say, hold on, this is essentially a little bit of a, a precursor of what may happen? There's nothing that we can really observe on the surface other than the fact that the Earth's magnetic field is unusually weak and is, is changing rapidly. If we start to get up into satellite altitudes, yeah, there, there are concerns there. If, if a satellite is going through this region and it just happens to correspond to a large event, a coronal mass ejection. That's when a larger part of the, the solar particles uh, detach from the sun and actually are hurled ter toward Earth. If those things coincide, uh, there can be damages to satellites. And today, when satellites go through this region, there are often precautions uh, taken because of these potential of these types of damaging events. Professor John Tarduno from the University of Rochester in New York, Rochester in New York, Rochester.